One of the things that makes science so exciting is the constant advance of science as new discoveries have been made. And some of these are tremendously significant for theology and uh, philosophy of religion. For example, in the field of astrophysics and cosmology, uh, scientists have now shown that in order to avoid the implications of the bohr guth vilenkin theorem for the beginning of the universe, you have basically only three alternatives. Um, either a, a bouncing model, uh, a cyclical sort of model, or a model where you push the origin of the universe back to past infinity, or a model in which the universe has existed from past infinity and then a finite time ago suddenly begins to expand. And that's it. You've got to choose a model from one of those three classes. Otherwise, you're stuck with the initial singularity predicted by the bohr guth vilenkin theorem. And there are powerful objections to all three of those different types of models. So that's one exciting, very recent scientific development. Another area of uh, exciting advances in population genetics and paleoanthropology, the origin of the human race. It was thought until very recently among population geneticists that the divergence genetically of the current population of the Earth could not have arisen from an original human pair, a founding pair, that the human population on this planet and its primate ancestors never fell below eight to 10,000 breeding individuals. And it was claimed that this conclusion was as certain as the conclusion that the Earth goes around the sun. And that has now been overcome. The first step was the demonstration by Joshua Swamidas that in fact there could have been a founding pair of the human race just so long as they existed prior to 500,000 years ago. The genetic evidence does not exclude the existence of such a founding pair if they existed earlier than 500,000 years ago. More recently, Population geneticists uh, in China have run new models and they have demonstrated that there actually did exist a population bottleneck of the human race around 750,000 to 900,000 years ago during this 100,000 year window of time in which the average population during that time was fewer than 1,300 breeding individuals. Now think that's the average over 100,000 years ago. That is entirely consistent with the population arising from an initial founding pair during that period. And interestingly enough, that is precisely the time at which Homo heidelbergensis arises, uh, the species to which I have argued Adam and Eve plausibly belong. And so this has been a very exciting positive development in the field of population genetics.